Hi, I'm DJ DSW, and welcome to Cameron Wade's Lemonade. Cameron will be along a little bit later to discuss the concept of his show. Basically, I'm going to play the tracks, and he's going to be singing to his songs. So let's get right to it. Singing Behind the Mask, the title from his new album, Freedom of Expression, let's welcome my favorite artist, Cameron Wade. I've been drinking this lemonade for a long time. <laughs> I hope that means good. Yes. So Cameron, tell me how is it during this pandemic time that you came up with a title behind the mask? 
It's a total coincidence. About a year and a half ago, Rick Hodge and I wrote this song. And what typically happens is he'll send me a track with a title. And he'll always say, don't worry about that title, just write whatever you want to write. And I always respond by saying, nah, if you thought up those words for, for a title, then something inspired you. So behind the mask, to me, is kind of autobiographical because I wrote a song that talks about a psychological mask, you know, and in my lifetime, you know, in my music career, people were always telling me, don't sing it like this, sound more like that, don't write about this, write more about that, and I get rebellious when I'm given instructions like that, so, you know, it's like, when I'm not being myself, when I'm not singing the messages I want to put out, when I'm not singing in a way that makes it feel good for me, I feel like I'm wearing a mask. Wow. Did you ever think August 2020 that we would be in a situation where the world is living behind the mask? Absolutely not. And it feels like it's getting crazier with every passing day. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Speaking of something interesting, you wanted me to explain the concept behind Cameron Wade's Lemonade. Back in April, I released Freedom of Expression, the album, and Rick and I were looking for a place to perform. And of course, as you know, by the middle of April, it was kind of a given that people weren't going to be performing for a while. So after walking around the house and wondering what I was going to do and, you know, just thinking about it, I thought about that phrase, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So here we are. So here we are indeed. Tonight's special guest is Doug Cologne the CEO and founder of the popular travel agency Dancing Doug Travel, or DDT. Last year, we were fortunate enough to experience one of the luxury products that they offered. What some people may not know about Doug Cologne is that he's also one of the original B-Boys, a component of hip-hop culture. Recently, the Postal Service released a series of stamps honoring hip-hop, including the B-Boys. Hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. Welcome. Hey, Cameron. Thanks for inviting me to Cameron, Cameron Way's Lemonade. That's a fly name. Hey, Doug. How did the concept of the B-Boys come about? B-Boys uh, came about back in 1973 at Cool Works Party up at 1520 Central Avenue in the Bronx. And what happened was you had a, uh, a blending of the DJ, who was Cool Herc, using this underground music, which was really hardcore drums and horns. And you had Coke the Rock, who was the first MC, using the little rhymes to that kind of music. And you had guys like Trixie, Wallace D, who just passed away, Teeny Rock, myself. We were the first guys battling. Sasa, Bobo, uh, the Twins, uh, Rossi, Kimmy, Dancing Doll, Aileen, uh, um, Gracie who passed away also, um, El Dorado Mike, Chip. So all these are the first B-boys and B-girls. So we would dance and what happened was, by Cool Herc, he invented what they called the merry-go-round. And was, that's the first time someone would play the exact same record on two turntables. Because back then everybody just played one, one song and that was it. And when that little one part of the break part of the song came, you would just do your little thing and that was it. Herc started taking that break and playing it over and over and over and over. Mm. So now, he called it the merry-go-round. So now, when you did your one little move, here comes the break again. Now you gotta do another move. And the mm -hmm. break again, now you gotta do another move. Mm -hmm. So then that made us start to evolve into doing more and more, they call it break moves. So they mm -hmm. become break moves, breaking boys, b-boys. And that's how the culture began. Hey Doug, how did you feel when you found that the Postal Service was issuing a b-boy stamp? The, uh, I was like super proud because to me, watching this whole b-boy explosion has become so international. You never, 
ever, ever, ever expect this to still be going on. Mm -hmm. I used to always tell everybody, back in 73 when we were doing it, 74, 75, 76, we started you know, going to cover the college, I'm mm -hmm. starting to go to clubs now. I'm not running the ground like I come up back before. Mm -hmm. I come back in like the end of 79, 80, and I say, hey, you guys still doing this? Then come 83, 84, 85, you guys still doing this? <laughs> then 1990, you still doing this? They're in the mm -hmm. train stations, they were like in Times Square, they were, you know, people, you know, break dancing. And then you saw the movies coming out, mm -hmm. and it sort of hit the world. So to see something that you started back in 73 still going strong, and I mean, People write me from Japan, from South America, from you know all these different countries saying, "Hey, hey, I'm a b-boy." You know, Norin Red from like Germany writes me like every other day or so, wow. and it's it's like amazing. I mean, mm. I'm just totally mind blown behind it. To be perfectly honest. I obviously, become commercial. That's the number one thing. You know, we did it, it was just for fun. Mm -hmm. There was no commercial endorsements. There was no you know American can dance or you know dancing with the stars whatever the case it was none of that stuff it was just a bunch of kids in the Bronx dancing we also had kids dancing in Harlem too so I gotta make sure I represent New York mm -hmm. Manhattan and the Bronx because they had Chuck Center Curtis Blow and Billy Puppet those guys from uh Chuck Center we used to dance against them in Harlem I actually come from Harlem I'm not from the Bronx I'm from Harlem but my girlfriend at the time lived in the Bronx and I would mm -hmm. go over there that's where I met Cool Herc and Coco Rock the ones who actually started with hip hop. Mm -hmm. So I used to hang out with them, and when they had the parties, I would go to their parties and then dance to their parties. So to see it go from that in the center mm -hmm. to the Twilight Zone, to the Hevelo, to the Executive Playhouse, those were the first three places, the first clubs we the hip hop you know, really evolved into the DJ, the MC, and the, the B Boy. The fourth element is, is, is graffiti which everyone was doing some, some kind of graffiti back then. Mm -hmm. That's the fourth leg. They say the, um, hip hop has four children. That's what Curtis Blow always said, we have four children. <laughs> the graph artist, the DJ, the MC, and the b-boy. So the, the, the graph artist is sort of to the side a little bit because a lot of people was doing that, but it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know. Hollywood says something, we interviewed Hollywood for the b-boy documentary, and he said something that was really, really uh, pressing when he said, you can sort of front being a DJ with all the equipment you got. You can catch your front being an MC because they can do echo chambers and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you can't front being a B-boy. How intense was the competition between you and the other B-boys back then? We used to battle guys against each other. Me and Trixie would go at it. You know, we had legendary battles. The first big battles with me and Trixie. Wow. And that's my guy. You know, we, we still, actually I talked to him today. We have a B-boy meeting every Tuesday night. So that's meeting with them tonight at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. But to see the, those guys, we all reconnected two years ago mm -hmm. and we started to do the B-Boy documentary to sort of put down in history who actually started it. Because people look at what happened in the 80s and associate that when you know, hip hop and B-Boy start, start, you know, started. It didn't, it started back in 73. So you got the crews from, the, they call the Herculoids. Then you got the guys from BAM's crew with, with the Zulu Nation guys, the Zulu Masters. Charlie Rock, I gotta mention Charlie Rock for the Zulu Kings. Mm -hmm. He's the linchpin, cause he and the Zulu Kings, it was 10 Zulu Kings, five Zulu Masters. Then you had the baby Zulus, and then you had Flash. Flash, mm -hmm. Flash, DJ Flash, mm -hmm. was actually a B-boy too. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't know that. And Flash's crew that would dance. Then from there you have TBB, Eric, Eric and um, Abby, mm -hmm. we call Abby from, and Batch, who started TBB, which is the Bronx Boys, who were a graffiti crew, mostly Hispanic guys. Mm -hmm. who picked it up, you know, you have a lot of blacks and Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans are black, so a lot of people try to differentiate between black and brown, and there's no differentiate between mm -hmm. us, we all were there at a certain point on that timeline. Right. So you have the Herculoids, you have BAMs, the Zulu, the Zulu Nation guys, you have Flash Crew, you have TVB, and they spawn Rocksteady Crew, and you have the, the, the uh, Floor Master Tasha Manhattan, who became mm -hmm. New York City Breakers. You have the Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, you have all these different crews that spawned mm. in the 80s once the movies came out with Beat Street and Breaking. Those movies mm -hmm. came out in, in the beginning of the 80s. Mm -hmm. Everybody started. So our documentary is going to show the first one being the Herculoids first, mm -hmm. just the guys who actually started it. Second one being the crews, because we were all individuals who danced. Mm -hmm. This one danced against that one, this one danced It wasn't crews. The crews came about in the mid to the late 70s. So then you have, you know, obviously the the Zulu Nation, the um, TBB, Flash's crew, and all of them, they started the end, the end of the 70s into the beginning of the 80s. 
in the 80s, it hit the movies, it hit all around the world. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the third one we do the 80s guys with, like Tell Me Wave and Fable and Ness, all these great you know, b-boy dancers from the 80s. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the 90s, we hit internationally. So we got, I did interviews with guys from Beijing, Kazakhstan, Middle East, <laughs> Belgium, they call them Belgians with Attitudes, mm -hmm. the Middle Beast crew, uh, UK crew, um, Kazakhstan, I mean, I did interview with Moscow, wow. my boy's from Moscow, Kadeem from Moscow, is my boy from Kadeem from Moscow. Mm. So mm. we spread all over the world now. And the last one will be the kids, mm -hmm. to watch the kids who are still keeping the, the legacy going. So I'll be out back to the future. So it'll be the fifth one, will be the kids. Mm -hmm. So I'm like really excited about that because it's, it's a see this thing still going and going so strong. It's, it's, it's just crazy. Wow, that was crazy, Doug. You just gave us a comprehensive history of b-boy culture in less than eight minutes. And Doug, we're aware that you're doing a documentary on the b-boys, and we anticipate that release date, so make sure you keep us posted. And it looks like we're ready for another song, is that correct? Absolutely, although Doug is a tough act to follow. Well, why don't we do a little warm-up by reminding everyone where they can get your music. Sure. One Human Race and Freedom of Expression are my two current albums, and you can get them wherever you get your online music. Also, don't forget to visit CameronWay.com where you can receive updates on what we're doing. And if you subscribe to my website, you'll get a copy of my newsletter camology every month great so what song are you going to do to close us out with i'm going to do lift your voices which is another song that i feel is relevant for these times and i hope people don't think i'm going to be serious like this every week but these two songs are so relevant even though lift your voices was written a couple of years ago now it just seems so so much more relevant today with all the social justice protests and everything else that's going on so here once again my favorite artist cameron wade Marching in the street Take a stand for what is right A face to feet In this material world You're not complete If you don't fight For your conviction Lift your voices Nothing's gonna change Make sure you power Ignite it like a flame Let the passion Rise above your pain. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Another life blown away. Because he doesn't look like you. Is that okay? Have we forgotten the golden words of an LK? Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. What you gonna do when the hard way through? And at the door. What you gonna do if it happens to you? And you're wailing on the floor. What's it gonna do to make the country shake? Until we realize. Loving your child and loving my child. The same exercise. Lift your voices. Or nothing's gonna change. Stay true to our world. United like a flame. Let your passion. Rise above your pain. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Now there's another day just like this. I'm talking back in 1776. Unfair taxation was the thing to resist. And the country was born to the need for justice. What you gonna do when the hard breaks through? When you're standing at your door What you gonna do when you have to do? You're wailing on the floor What you gonna do to make the country shake? Until we realize Loving your child and loving my child The same 
exercise. Nothing's gonna change. United like a flame. Let the passion. You gotta rise above your pain. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. If your words keep falling on deaf ears, that only proves a pig is passing peace. So we made some progress through the years. That doesn't mean we shouldn't keep on fighting. Your voices. Nothing's gonna change. Speak truth to power. Ignited like a flame. Let the passion. You gotta rise with the pain. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Yeah. 